Hello, God bless from Up Ministries. It's me, Dick Jr. I'm coming to you today to read you 1 Kings chapter 8. This is a monster chapter. It's like four and a half pages long. It's a lot of columns. Anyway, um, I prayed and I asked God to help me to speak to you today before I started this video. And uh, I suggest also, though, that anytime you read God's Word, place yourself in God's Word, however you want to say that, that you also pray and ask God for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding specifically. And he's going to give them to you. And there is a promise such as that uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. I also suggest, though, that you go to God with other things in prayer. Anything, really. Uh, wants, needs, concerns. You know, go to him with praises, too, when something good happens. You know, tell him, thank you, Lord, thank you for this wonderful, you know, blessing that's been given to me. He likes to hear that, too. But uh, I can't make any promises on these prayers, but I can say that he's a prayer answering God. Okay, How can I say that? Because he has answered many of my prayers. Maybe not all of them, but someday I know he will because he promises he will. Um, but he has answered my prayers more abundantly than I could have even imagined or wished for. Okay, And I'm not talking about monetary things. You know, it's not like I didn't. It's not all about money. You know, life is not all about money. Um I'm happy. I have more joy than I've ever had. Uh, security, you know, um, relationships, wonderful things have happened since God, since I gave myself to God and since he uh, started to answer my prayers and listen to me. So anyways, those things being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started here in uh, 1 Kings chapter 8 and I'm going to try to get through this um, without messing it up too bad. There's a few things I've circled in here, interesting things, things that really caught my I, as I've read through it uh, quite a few times, actually. Um, so anyways, let's get started here. Uh, then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the fathers, households of the sons of Israel, to King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. All the men of Israel assembled themselves to King Solomon at the feast in the month Athenim, Athenim, which is the seventh month. Then all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark. They brought up the ark of the Lord and the tent of meeting. And all the holy utensils which were in the tent, and the priests and the Levites brought them up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled to him were with him before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priest brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place into the inner sanctuary of the house in the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim, which are described in previous chapters. Uh, for the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim made a cover, covering over the ark and its poles from above. But the poles were so long that the ends of the poles could be seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from outside. They are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone which Moses had put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the sons of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. It happened that when the priests came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick cloud. I have surely built you a lofty house, a place for your dwelling forever. Then the king faced about and blessed all the assembly of Israel while all the assembly of Israel was standing. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to my father David and has fulfilled it with his hand, saying, Since the day that I brought my people Israel from Egypt, I did not choose a city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. 
Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, Because it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the house, but your son who will be born to you, he will build the house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his word, which he spoke. For I have risen in place of my father David and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. There I have set a place for the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands towards heaven. He said, O Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above, nor on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing loving kindness to your servants who walk before you with all their heart, who have kept with your servant my father David that which you have promised him. Indeed, you have spoken with your mouth and have fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Now therefore, O Lord, the God of Israel, keep your servant David, my father, that which you have promised him, saying, You shall not lack a man to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your sons take heed to their way to walk before me as you have walked. Now therefore, O God of Israel, let your word, I pray, be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house which I have built. Yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to listen to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you today, that your eyes may be open toward this house night and day, toward the place of which you have said, My name shall be there, to listen to the prayer which your servant shall pray toward this place. Listen to the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear in heaven your dwelling place, hear and forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath, and he comes and takes an oath before your altar in this place, then hear in heaven and act and judge your servants, condemning the wicked by bringing his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. When your servant is, when your people Israel are defeated before an enemy, because they have sinned against you, if they turn to you again and confess your name and pray and make supplication to you in this house, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land which you gave to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because, you, because they have sinned against you, and they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn their sin uh, when you afflict them, turn from their sin when you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and of your people Israel. Indeed, teach them the good way in which they should walk. I circled that. Teach them the good way in which they should walk. So there is a good way in which we should walk, and it is in here. Okay. Uh, send rain on your land which you have given your people for an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence, if there is blight or mildew, locust or grasshopper, if their enemy besieges them in the land of their cities, whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, Whatever prayer or supplication is made by any man or by all your people Israel, each knowing the affliction of his own heart and spreading his hands toward this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and forgive and act and render to each according to all his ways, whose hearts you know, for you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men. I circled that as well. You alone know the hearts of all the sons of men. So God alone knows the hearts of all of us. Okay. Uh, 
that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you have given to your fathers. Also given to our fathers, sorry. Also concerning the foreigner who is not of your people, Israel. This is where we're at, but we're adopted, but still. When he comes from a far country for your name's sake, for they will hear of your great name and your mighty hand and of your outstretched arms when he comes and prays towards this house here in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name to fear you as do your people Israel and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by your name and when your people go out to battle against their enemy by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to the Lord toward the city which you have chosen and the house which I have built for your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. And when they sin against you, for there is no man who does not sin. I circled that. There is no man who does not sin. Okay? And you are angry with them and deliver them to an enemy so that, they, so that they take them away captive to the land of the enemy far off or near. If they take thought in the land where they have been taken captive and repent and make supplication to you in the land of those who have taken them captive, saying, We have sinned and have committed iniquity. We have acted, acted wickedly. If they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who have taken them captive and pray to you toward their land which you have given to their fathers, the city which you have chosen and the house which I have built for your name, then hear their prayer and their supplication in heaven, your dwelling place, and maintain their cause. Forgive your people who have sinned against you and all their transgressions which they have transgressed against you, and make them objects of compassion before those who have taken them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they are your people and your inheritance, which you have brought forth from Egypt, from the midst of the iron furnace, that your eyes may be open to the supplication of your servant, to the supplication of your people Israel, to listen to them, whenever they call to you. For you have separated them from all the peoples of the earth as your inheritance, as you spoke through Moses, your servant, when you brought our fathers forth from Egypt, O Lord God. When Solomon had finished praying this entire prayer and supplication to the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread toward heaven, and he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel, with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel, according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he has promised through Moses his servant. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us or forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to himself, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his ordinances, which he commanded our fathers. And may these words of mine, with which I have made supplication before the word, be near before the Lord, sorry, be near to the Lord our God day and night, that he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people as each day requires, so that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God. There is no one else. There is no one else. Let your heart, therefore, be wholly devoted to the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and keep his commandments as at this day. Now the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. Solomon offered for sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered to the Lord 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the sons of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. On the same day, the king consecrated the middle of the court 
that was before the house of the Lord, because there he offered the burnt offerings and the grain offering and the fat offering of peace and the fat of the peace offering, sorry. For the bronze altar that was before the Lord was too small to hold the burnt offering and the grain offering and the fat of the peace offerings. So Solomon observed the feast at that time and all Israel with him, a great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt before the Lord our God for seven days and seven more days, even 14 days. On the eighth day, he sent the people away and they blessed the king. And then he went to their tents. Then they went to their tents joyfully and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had shown to David, his servant, and to Israel, his people. And that is 1 Kings chapter 8. Thanks for listening and God bless.